Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the ground and power planes inside of KiCad. This is part of the KiCad schematic, or the KiPad, KiCad layout uh, tutorial. So let's open up KiCad. Uh, we got the launcher here. And I did do a little bit of pre-work here, actually, uh, since we've already gone over a lot of it. I did actually add uh, some simple components here, a uh, top net, a ground net, and then I actually associated the components and we're already ready to pull this in through the net list, much of which we've already gone over. And there we go. Got our components. Move these over. We'll go grab these and uh, move around a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, so we got our components. We're going to draw a little board outline around here. Oops. Edge cuts. All right, make that nice and big. Put some in here. There we go. Got our board outline. All right, so we're good to go here. Uh, so what do we want to do? Well, first off, actually, let's, uh, let's also wire up these connect or these components. Doesn't have to be anything fancy here. Under the copper layer, oops, connect these up. Super simple, very crappy layout. <laughs> all right, uh, all right. Now we want to connect up. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, pin one should be connected to. This should be pin two of the inductor should be connected to ground. Pin one should be the power. Let me double check that. So let's actually try adding a power plane first. Huh, it's not uh, showing our nits there. So let's actually add one more component. Give me one second here. So we're going to add a component here. Don't necessarily have to populate it. All the usual things here. There we go. Yeah, that did it. We didn't have enough uh, things connected to the net there, so now we have two pins here, so it shows up as the net uh, 12 plus 12 V in the ground. All right, so there we go. Uh, so now, if we want to add a plane to connect these two things together, the plus 12 V, we can actually. So we click over here on the uh, ground plane. We choose which layer we want. In this case, we have two layers. And now we choose the layer we want to actually add as a as a plane. And then we have a whole bunch of settings here. So we have clearance, we have minimum width, we have corner smoothing, some of the options here are chamfer, fillet, thermal relief or solids or uh, through hole therm uh, thermals, uh, anti-pad clearance, spoke width, which refers to the pad connection, priority level, the fill mode is segment or polygon. You can choose how many segments there are. And finally, uh, the outline slope and the style of the hatch, which we'll see here in a second. So let's actually add. So we're right now we we clicked, we chose which net we want to actually associate the the plane with, and now we simply draw the plane. You can see it shows up red, which is the same color as the outline or as the uh, copper layer we're on. Double click shows up here. That's good. Now if we right click. We say fill or refill. We see a couple things. One is that it it actually stays away from all the nets that are not of the same name. In this case, this N000003 is not the same as the plus 12V, so it actually does not try and associate it, which is good because otherwise that would be a short. Then we can see a couple other things here. So we can see the clearance away from the line and then away from the pad. And then also we can see the the, uh, the thermal relief off of the pad. And the reason that's there is so that when you try and solder something 
to this pad uh, if it was just a direct connection it's a possibility to do that however uh, you know if you touch a soldering iron to this point right here basically the more copper you have connected around the edge the more heat it's going to take to actually heat up this pad and so we can actually uh, edit the zone here so if we right out, go out to the edge here right click zones and then edit zone parameters we can actually change this we can go solid hit OK we can say fill or refill you can see that same pad is now solid so if we try and solder to that you'll see that this is an exposed area in the solder mask but there's so much copper on it that you would have to heat up a significant portion of the copper inside the PCB and that'd be a very very difficult thing to do so we can uh, go back in change this back to thermal relief which is good uh, we can also change clearance stuff so if we make this 50 perhaps oops, 50 we refill we see the clearance away from the pa or the uh, traces is much higher if we go and edit again we change the minimum width to maybe 100 need to make that a little bit smaller this actually refers to the uh, spoke width here so we'd actually have to make these all larger as well now the minimum width is there and this would have to be five or 500 mils which is kind of extreme let's be honest here so we fill a refill yeah now we can see it doesn't even clear in there because that that uh, that zone is trying to be so huge Back to edit zone, change this back down. Zero, make that back to ten. Actually, let's take this back down to twenty, like it should be. And anti pad and spoke width. Now, if we want to change out, uh, not that one, sorry, the uh, segments here, we go to 32 segments. Hit OK, fill or refill. Uh, we can't see as much here, but uh, if we actually had sharper shapes, we'd be able to see some of that stuff. Now, an interesting thing is that if you... So right now, we are on the copper settings, right? We could also go to the bottom side. We can click again, create a bottom side copper for the ground layer, right? We could draw it around these components here, which all contain ground layer components. And then if we fill or refill... That's not working. This is not seeming to be working right now. Let's uh, let's come back to that. Actually, what we can also see is if we uh, if we draw. Let's get rid of that. If we draw a new zone around this zone, so we go back in here, draw a zone. Click to select the same zone there. We can actually draw across it here. And if we just draw like this, you can see that it overlaps some of the corners. And then if we fill or refill, it actually takes it actually expands the zone that's that we're already there, which is nice. So another thing to note here is if we uh, mouse over the outside edge of the zone, we actually get a pretty big context menu here. So we can add similar zones, we can add so cutout areas. We can do that here. If we refill or refill. You see we have a cutout area, so say we wanted to not have a zone in a certain area here. Uh, if we go, and, and again, you have to be a, a mouse over the outside edge in order to actually get that oops, that context menu there, the zone menu. We can move the zone. We can edit the parameters, which is what we've been doing. We can duplicate it, we add a similar zone, drag the outline segment or create corners which is just a manipulation so if we similarly if we uh, mouse over and hit the G we can actually grab that and start moving around or if you wanted to grab the corner grab a break here come on oh deselect our tool there create a corner actually pull this out like that so those are really just manipulations of that you have to be on this tool in order to uh, create the zone at all uh, to have get that menu or anything. Now this is also interesting because as we go outside the 
area here, you know, we can uh, we can see that this distance here is actually preset by the the zone parameters, uh, and that's helpful too because as we get towards the board edge, we don't want to have copper going all the way out because we end up, you know, if the copper goes all the way out to the edge here, that when the 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 milling bit comes through and actually chops up your board, you might end up having exposed copper, and that's a potential for shorts. So that's a bad thing. As we went over when we started uh, a lot of these KiCad videos, we can see the different viewing points over here. Right now we have the showing all the views, all the filled zones. We can also see just the outlines, and we can also just uh, we can also see the uh, the refactorings here. And so as we see the thermals, this is just the outline around the parts as well. So there's fill in between a lot of these things, but uh, not necessarily inside there. Let's go back to that view. Okay, that's good. I'm going to try moving this part here. Okay, and let's actually try, oops, let's try creating a new zone here. We do this on the back side now, the one that we were having trouble with before. Backside copper, show all. Let's try doing this nice and big here. Hopefully this works. No, nope, that's still not working. Aha, I know why. <laughs> so if we grab this component here. So we have one of two choices. The reason it's not drawing is there's actually nothing on the back side right now. So we grab a component. We can either move one to the back side. Flip. And then we can fill this zone in. Fill both zones in. Or alternately, we could have just routed a trace down here because that's what we would need to do anyways. Route a trace from here, hit a via, and now we're down onto that layer. Oh, that was backwards, sorry. There we go. Now the same thing if we f bring this component back up top side. Flip. There we go. And we redraw. We still have that bottom trace there. Uh, now something that's important to notice here is that uh, you have different colorations when you have overlaid planes. So this is important both for you know a two-layer board like we're doing here, or as you start getting into a you know well we do have this is a two-layer board we could do you know easily switch it over to a four-layer board six eight ten twelve, um, <coughs> and you can have multiple zones now normally. Uh, you know, when you have multiple layer boards like that, like a six or eight layer board, you're going to have a power plane and a ground plane all to itself. And you'll see end up seeing like pock marks of, you know, vias coming through and everything. Um, <clears throat> so it can get a little confusing to view, but this is going to be your, your main ability to see over here. We can see just the bottom layer copper there. So that is very helpful for that kind of thing. Uh, you can be able to remember to turn it on and off though. Same kind of thing here. Now as we uh, create more more traces through here, create more connections, we actually will see those, uh, the reliefs there <coughs> and the clearance. So it's important to keep in mind. Uh, outside of that, uh, we should also look at the fact that it's not just limited to the current, or the uh, copper layers rather. We can also create planes, uh, not just for power and ground. I mean, obviously this was called the power and ground uh, video, plane video, but we can also create these planes, quote unquote, on such a silk screen layer or a solder mask layer. And what that'll do is basically allow you to kind of draw out your shapes here. So this is on the backside silk screen. I didn't quite get that closed. There we go. And so this would just show up as a shape on the backside silk screen. Now I'm not sure you'd really want to do that if I was going to put silk screen on there. I would probably do that with a graphic using using the uh, bitmap to uh, footprint converter. But if you do need a big block here, you can very easily do that kind of thing by hitting the plane button and then choosing your layer here. And you can see a lot of the, it allows you to actually select all these things. We could select a, even just a hatched, uh, you know, maybe if we want to have a hatched adhesion layer. Uh, again, I'm not really sure why you'd want to do that, but we definitely could. Uh, yep. So, 
actually let's switch over the line and see what happens there. There we go. Uh, that didn't do much there. I think because it's not the copper layer. So if we switch this over, zones, if we edit the zone here, change this to line. Each, uh, and that's not showing there. Sometimes you'll see with the hatching as well, it'll uh, it'll change the look so it actually looks like a, a cross-hatch pattern. Really, it's not necessary these days. That was done back in the day for uh, the amount of copper that was on a board, so it shouldn't really be a big deal for us, but it is an option here. Uh, oops. Come on. Did not let me do it there. Yeah, it's not. Oh, there we go. So there's some of the hatching there, but again, uh, we're not. Really, it's not really showing it here. It might be in the Gerbers. <coughs> so um, power planes, ground planes, they allow you to create, you know, big swaths of your board all at the same potential. Uh, it allows you to have multiple connections without actually routing said connection. So in this case, at this point, is at the 12 volt plane. And this points at the 12 volt plane, and we could have many other plane, uh, many other parts that are tapped into that same plane, which is a very common thing for both power and ground. All right, any other questions? Hit up the forum, and thanks for watching.